dating again and you know what they say about dating it's just like riding a bicycle I always have a sore ass and scabby knees when I'm finished <laughs> <laughs> I was really nervous to start dating because I'd been through a bit of a dry spell so to sort of pump myself up I went out and I bought just a bunch of fancy new underwear like just in case and as I was putting the new underwear in the drawer next to my old underwear, I realized how disgusting my old underwear is. I think we all have these pairs like hidden at the back of the drawer, just like waiting for a laundry day. You take them out and you're just like, is this a family heirloom? I don't remember buying this. They're so old and so gross that they could be president of the United States. <laughs> new undies and I went out on a date and I knew that this date was gonna be bad the second I smelled this guy uh, you know what I'm talking about this guy was just like pickled in cologne and it was that type of cologne that just smells like if you could bottle a guy going if I could just play devil's advocate like <laughs> it was bad it was bad so the dry spell continued and it was rough because all of my friends were having like the most sex anyone's ever had. And they just wanted to tell me all about it. So instead of, you know, being a grown up and saying like, hey, I don't really want to hear about that right now, I decided to become a weirdo and become a very active listener. So they'd be like telling me about their sex lives and I'd just be like, what? How many people? <laughs> Why was Gorn on the cob involved? Oh and then when I really couldn't take it anymore, I'd lean in so close that they could feel my breath and I'd just go, I'm getting really good at masturbating. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, oh my god, Elspeth, download Tinder. Like, they're gonna end up on a watch list. Like, so I begrudgingly <laughs> downloaded Tinder. And I was surprised, I was surprised because right away I matched with this guy who is exactly my type, by which I mean he looked like Stanley Tucci. Bald you know? <laughs> guy with glasses. Yeah, it's a weird type, but it's my type and I will stand in my truths. Stanley Tucci. <laughs> Thank you. So we went out on our date and I was like so happy because he was even hotter in real life because a lot of times these Stanley Tucci types <laughs> they'll look like the Tucci on Tinder <laughs> but in real life they're just like a stretched out Danny DeVito <laughs> and it's a small difference but it's an important difference <laughs> So we have this date and he's great, he's so charming, he's so funny, we hit it off, we get a little drunk, we head back to my place, we start fooling around. And as we're fooling around, he's just like, he stops me and he goes, Elspeth, I've always wanted to be eaten alive by a mama tiger <laughs> protecting her young. <laughs> And I'm just baffled by how weird and how specific that is. But I'm just like, I'm so close, so close. So I'm just like, okay, okay, you know what? I'll do it. So in my head, I'm just like, what does a mama tiger do? So I think about the National Geographic channel, which is not something I normally think about during sex. So I just like pounce on him, I pounce. And I start like, you know, like nibbling on his neck and shoulders. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> tell me what you're doing, and I'm like, mm, I'm eating your neck and shoulders. <laughs> and he's like, no, say it like a mama tiger. So I'm like, oh, I'm eating your neck and shoulders, and I'm tired because my baby was up all night crying. <laughs> he's like, no, no, I mean like growl and purr, and I'm like, oh, that makes more sense. <laughs> so I growl and purr and bite and pounce my way down to his swimsuit area. <laughs> and just as I'm about to get there, he grabs my face and he goes, I want you to eat my entrails. Oh. Oh. But you guys, dry spell, it's so close. So 
so I'm just uh. like, okay. <laughs> So I start like biting his stomach. He's like, yeah. <laughs> what are you eating? Oh. I'm like, my large intestine. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to say that in a sexy voice, but I think I managed it. He's like, yeah, what else? I'm like, I don't know, your kidneys down there? <laughs> He's like, what else? I'm like, I wasn't expecting a fucking biology exam for you. <laughs> It was great. Um, but then the next morning I wake up and I'm hungover and he has just like left without a trace. And I'm sitting there just feeling just like such low self-esteem. It's like, oh God, like I did that and for nothing. Like, and then I have this revelation. I'm like, you know what? Maybe having low self-esteem isn't always a bad thing. You know? Like because of my low self-esteem. I think I'd be really good at getting kidnapped. You know? Like, I'd be scared at first, obviously. I'd be startled. <laughs> but after a couple minutes, I'd be like, wait a second. There are three million people in Montreal. This guy had choices. <laughs> but he picked a me. <laughs> After a couple minutes, I'd be like scooching my way up to the front of his windowless van, just like, hey. I know it hasn't been long since you like hogtied me and threw me in here, but um, I'm just gonna say it. I love you. <laughs> so this is gonna come as a bit of a shock to all of you, but I do go to therapy. <laughs> And I, I absolutely love therapy. If I could change it just a little bit, though, I do wish that it was graded, because I'd be getting an A plus for how well I'm dealing with my constant need for validation. <laughs> In therapy, I talk a lot about like healthy ways to deal with anxiety. So I've actually I've started a band. We're made up entirely of people who get anxiety while wholesale shopping. <laughs> We're called Panic at the Costco. Uh, <laughs> All right, you guys, I'm 